shown livestock. Who's never shown livestock? Wow, so okay. So welcome. Yeah, good to see you. Most everybody's had their hand on something other than uh, than guinea pigs or rabbits. So that's yeah, good. Um, my topic today is goat equipment. And you can see this is yeah, lots of equipment here. So you, if you've never seen anything before, feel free to look around and, and check everything out afterwards. So we're gonna get started here. The topics covered today are types of clippers, blades used, care of clippers and blades, and equipment needed showing. And I like this picture here. He's trying to drag his goat and I know he's going to the wash rack. I know that's where he's going. And the goat knows that and he's not going to go. But uh, that's just to stress the importance of keeping your animal clean before you clip. You want to make sure he's as clean as he possibly can be before you put your clippers on because that will ruin your clippers. It will dull them and make them unusable. So very important. All these different choices, what are we going to do? These are the ones that I stole out of my dad's bathroom drawer when I was a little kid because I loved to clip animals. I wanted to clip my dog, I wanted to clip my horse. So I stole these, I got in big trouble. So uh, needless to say, I inherited those clippers. But the, uh, I got my grandpa's beef heads next, and these were very noisy, very heavy, and very awkward. But they do have some modern day Improvements. The listers uh, over here, and then the pre uh, the premieres, but they're over. I think that I checked, and they were like 420 something. But uh, but I I decided we used to pack and ride mules, and I used to have to roach the mains all the time, and so I went cordless. And I do a lot of pretty branding with our cattle, and so this was great. I just put it in my pocket, go out to the shoot, and get it done. But these batteries are over fifty dollars, and they only last maybe a year. So that was a big plan. But fortunately, they have a cord little thing that goes with it. So you can plug it into the cord, plug it into the wall, and keep those cords going and not have to rely on those batteries. But these, uh, just as an example, this is a brand new set that I bought uh, a couple weeks ago. A two speed, very fast, very, very powerful clipper. And I basically started using just one blade. I, I have a whole briefcase full of blades I used to use with all these different size guards. And, uh, and when I was a beginner, that was perfect because I didn't make a mistake. But now, I, seeing some of the professionals clip, I see that they only use these. And because you can get a real close clip, you can get, you can do blend, you can do whatever you want with these. And they're very forgiving. This is a medium blending blade on a two speed, uh, 44 stroke per minute, um, and it's clip. So yeah, this is just the different blades. This is what I'm using now, and the A5 is what I used to use. The ceramic sprays too, it's very nice. They are uh, very bad conductor of heat, so they stay really cool, and which is really nice. Because the faster the blade, the, the more friction the, the harder they get, and that can really cause problems. So um, just to make you aware of some of these things, but they're very fragile. With the ceramic, it's like glass, so they break really easy. So if you chip a tooth or you get a piece of sand under the rail, then it's, it pretty much it just doesn't make your pet very good. So I just wanted to point that out to you. I'm kind of a do-it-yourselfer kind of girl, so I, I instead of relying on some of your sharpen my blades, I like to figure out a way to do it myself. And I'm going to try this Norton system. It's a water stone sharpening kit. And I've also got the old big metal, I don't know what you call it, just a, it's a Brewer's Choice sharpener that I used to use too, which works pretty good. Sometimes you do have to send it out and have it professionally done because it's hologram, it's a special type of, of uh, sharpening. It's done. Can't stress it enough, dirt will dull your clippers. You go to paint for I would recommend putting them in the shower, but. Uh, so, and in the winter time, if you, basically, if your dad has a shop vac and you just want to blow him off, or if you have a if you have a blower that you can blow the dust off with or whatever you can, take a towel, a wet towel, and just kind of just kind of wipe the hair down, and then take a dry towel, and then just wipe all that wetness off, and just kind of fluff the hair and get it as clean as you can. And then you can you can put them in the winter time if you're afraid of getting your animals sick, and you don't want to, to risk it. So, but there is an option. Oh, really? No dry 
right and see for you. Because if you're going to, if you have a wet coat, it's going to mat down and it's not going to give a nice cut. So it's going to be washy and it's, it's not going to look as good. Make sure all that hair is separate and fluffed. And nice. Start clipping. When I first started showing goats, I looked at this and I thought, you've got to be kidding me. i got to remember all this. How am I supposed to do this? I had somebody clip my goat for me. I don't know. I forget that. But it's you're basically sculpting the goat. When we're doing the, the, the full blood breeding shows, we basically just sculpt them on the goat. So a uh, little different with weathers, but uh, but it can be overwhelming just to try and get started. This is more of a weather type clip. You just take the clippers and, uh, and do a body clip like that. And this shows a nice aluminum stand provided by Seidel. And this, I have some different catalogs up here. Very good company with good products. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of nice equipment that they make. So that's a nice stand. Keep your clippers cool and clean. This is, I, I use this at, at a show when I, when I go to clip. Uh, it keeps the blades cool, keeps them lubricated short term. These are just have silicone nets. So you don't want it to store your clippers with just this on them because it will dry them out and they can corrode. If you have steel clippers, they will corrode and rust over time. So, and if I'm doing multiple goats at home, I'll have this big tub of, uh, of blade care, and I just dip my clippers in it. You just dip the very tips of it in, in this liquid, and you want to hold it upside down, because if you put it like this, all that liquid's going to go into your motor, and it's going to burn up your motor. So you use a paper towel, dry it off, just get the excess off, and keep your clippers going. Most important right there is the clipper oil. And it's basically before you clip, during your clip, and after you clip to store it. Use the oil. And I'll show you what you basically do. It's just four drops. Those little rails on the bottom blade, you want one drop there, one drop there, one drop there, and one drop there. And you just run your clippers, and that will oil them So it doesn't take a whole lot of oil. And then when you're done with all that work, you get to reap the rewards and get your blue ribbon and yeah, everybody's looking good. So it's worth it's worth the effort. And just to show some different types of equipment that's available out there, this is an aluminum copper that we just purchased. And it's uh, I started out with a dog crate and it was kind of too small for my biggest dough and so we thought we looked into this and it was kind of a nice option. There's a window a view window and in the front here so you can see what your goats are doing and there's some little dividers so you can put different goats in there at one time. You can put a, a rack a rack for the hay and everything on top. So it's just a nice option. It's just one of those. Yeah. We got this for I got the breakdown and it was uh, just under nineteen hundred. So and then my husband went back and put uh, put lights. He's got we've got backup lights in the we put, we put interior lights. So we can get more equipment available. This is Shulton Manufacturing here up in Yuba Center area. Very nice equipment. We've got, we have one of their uh, fitting stands in the, in the corner there. And really happy with it. We can just winch it down, put my biggest buck on there, and winch it back up in the air, and I can do whatever I need to do. No worries. And Sullivan Supply is a great place for the shampoos and, and boxes and stands as well. So very nice. And so I you kind of tend to focus and concentrate and worry and, and, and fret about certain things, but you just have to step back, look at the big picture, and say, have fun. We're just here to have fun and learn and, and experience this with our friends. And so it's just, yeah, so just have to step back sometimes and, and just enjoy. Because goats are fun. They're really a fun project to have. <laughs> so that's basically it. And I've got, uh, lots of things to look at here. I've got different chains that I use. If anybody has questions, I have a training chain. I have a regular show chain. So, um, yeah, there's all sorts of things. And you can make your own straps out of old belts. I'm going to make one for I've got a real pretty little bow that I just bought. So I'm going to dress it up. I'm going to make my own strap out of this. So it's, you know, you can just, there's all sorts of ideas. So if anybody has any questions, I use a grinder instead of uh, with nippers. So there's, you know, there's options there. I find it does a little better job, but you have to be careful and you should let your parents do it instead of you. It's, it takes a little supervision, so very dangerous tool. But there's all sorts of different options out there. It shows some of the medicines that I have to take to the shows. I've got some AI equipment that I use because I, I started AI in goats. So yeah, if anybody has any questions at the end or now, whichever, so yeah, go ahead. Um, Oh, 
give them a bath how often? At the show, I usually just bathe, I just soak them up once and then I'll rinse on a daily basis. Just, if there'll be two shows back to back, you just soak it up for the first show and then the next day you can just rinse them off and then blow dry and then just kind of fluff up the dry. Because if you shampoo them too much, it dries out their hair. So you have to use kind of conditioner or some kind of. started last year, but I kind of immersed myself in it, so I, my confidence level, usually people that have been doing it years, for years, will be the day of the show. They'll just go in and they'll just zip, 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 okay, go in. But I kind of do it a week before. I do it the weekend before I get there. Just to make sure if I did, yeah, and so I can kind of step back, oh, I should have done, you know, I should have touched that. Before. It's just, it helps. Anybody else? Okay. I have just a quick note that I have on our website, stinchfieldranch.com, I've got a goat show checklist. And this is available if anybody wants to, to, to I've got a link on the website. And it's just got everything, it's it's a lifesaver for me. You know, it just has everything under the sun that I might forget. And it makes the show a lot more of a success by not forgetting anything. So if you want to go and you can help yourself to that on the website. So what's the website? It's uh, stinchfieldranch.com. And I've got another links and uh, documents. So. But uh, if there's no more questions, I'll hand it over to Kathy Garrett. Take it from there.